From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. We're taking you behind the curtain at the Billings Art House Cinema ahead of a big time transformation. This truly is the community of Billings stepping up to say we want to be a part of this. Plus, Wyoming passes legislation designed to keep Native American foster kids with tribal families. Will Montana do the same? There's already a lot of this stuff that's already been in place, but this is going to be a lot more comprehensive. And a longtime Billings gas station is shutting down. Find out what made it so special. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Friday, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. Hope the day is treating you well so far. We begin with an unusual problem plaguing a Billings neighborhood. Dozens upon dozens of dead birds littering residents' backyards. And new this morning, Q2's Haley Monaco investigates what's happening and she found some answers. Now I know these black spots behind me here that you can see may look like leaves, but they're actually rows of dead birds. Over a hundred of them have been found on just this property alone. You can see them just about everywhere you look, dozens upon dozens of dead starlings spread out across the neighborhood. You just look in front yards, you can see them under trees all over. Josh Digley lives on the Billings South Side and says it's the sheer number of dead birds that had him doing a double take. In the last five days, 27. Uh, it started Sunday night, I noticed there was quite a few that landed in the yard and some of them just never got up and left. Yeah, there's one right over here that's dead. Digley found four in just the short amount of time MTN was with him Thursday. And in his neighbor's yard across the street, they said over 100 dead birds have been found. It, it just seems so weird, the amount out of nowhere. So MTN started to investigate. It turns out the U.S. Department of Agriculture is responsible for the hundreds of dead starlings. The agency tells us they're using a chemical bait called DRC-1339 to reduce the number of birds in the area, saying in part, the large number of roosting starlings increases the potential of passing disease to livestock. DRC-1339 works very quickly, however, dead birds may be found days afterwards. In this instance, local government were notified of this abatement project and the potential that dead birds may be seen. The USDA also says the dead birds do not pose a threat to humans or pets. For nobody to say anything about it, I think that's what's really weird. Digley says finding the birds has been a weird occurrence and he has been taking photos of each one he finds. They're usually peaceful. Some of them just land. They're standing on their feet. Um, I even have some pictures of some that their beaks aren't even down. They're just standing dead. The USDA would not tell us where the chemical salt is being fed to the starlings, but the EPA says the risk to humans and pets is minimal. But residents like Digley are skeptical. If it drops a bird out of the air and kills it, if your cat eats it, your cat's probably going to be at risk. Your dog's probably at risk. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Thanks, Haley, for your work on that. And happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. We're looking live right now. This is the Temple Bar in downtown Dublin, where the party has already begun. It's just after noon there, getting kicked off early. Remember, the downtown Billing St. Patrick's Day Parade is tomorrow morning. Those festivities kick off at 10 a.m. Lots of big crowds there, lots of green. Yeah. Probably half tourists, half locals. Well, probably. So I'm sure no like alcohol. a great time. I'm sure no alcohol is involved right now. None whatsoever. <laughs> Literally like none. Having a good time there. Unfortunately, it looks like you got a little bit of rain there uh, in Dublin. Let's take a live look at the radar there. You did a good job earlier. Can you tell me, since you've got Irish oh in gosh. your blood, name some of those cities oh, there. I'm kind of blind. Hold on. Okay, so, so, so it Waterford. It? Cork. I got that one. Okay. Dublin. Artie. Tullam Tullamore. Okay. Kilkenny. I don't know. Limerick. Limerick. Very, okay, well, you know, you did pretty good there. Thanks. Uh, Galway. Well, very we good. know those. Yeah. Those are familiar. Now, we'll have the luck of the Irish for us when it comes to our weather because the weekend looking pretty good. We'll tell you about that with the forecast coming up. Let's take a step back in time. Yesterday, our high of 41, a good 8 degrees below the norm. We were colder than average, too, with our low down to about 23. We're probably going to have that again today. Um, and then we're going to start to warm up tomorrow and then try to hit the 50s by the time we get to Sunday. Top gust yesterday near 30. Winds should be calmer today. Did have at least a, a light dust of snow around the area here in Billings. Uh, not much in terms of any time. In fact, there's no measurement in terms of the moisture. So our numbers are continuing to go down uh, for the month. Uh, we're in the hole now in terms of the snow total. We've been that way for the entire season. Uh, maybe by the time we get to middle of next week, we could see some hefty snow heading our way. And we'll tell you about that coming up with the main forecast. Right now, 21 clear skies. Feels like 11 at the airport. Winds out of the west at about nine miles an hour. Teens and 20s right now, for the most part, we'll see highs today anywhere from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. 
on our way to the final weekend of winter, which is looking pretty darn good. We'll take a look at that coming up. All righty, Miller, warming up out there. We'll yeah. talk to him again in a few minutes. Thank you. More headlines this morning. Wyoming Governor Mark Gordon recently signed a bill that makes the Indian Child Welfare Act part of their state law. Montana's lawmakers are considering doing the same thing. Congress enacted ICWA in 1978 to protect Native American children from removal from their tribes to be fostered or adopted by anybody from outside of a federally recognized tribe. And now the U.S. Supreme Court is expected to rule on a case challenging those protections sometime this year after hearing arguments in the Highland v. v. Bra uh, Brackeen case this past fall. Eleven states have now codified ICWA, including Wyoming. Box Elder Representative Jonathan Windyboy told me he hopes the bill ensures that Montana tribes continue to have a say in the child protective care process. There's already a lot of this stuff that's already been in place, but this is going to be a lot more comprehensive for all of the systems to work closer hand in hand to make sure that that the uh, the, the child is is not caught in a system that's not to their best, best interest. Montana's MICWA bill, House Bill 317, if you're looking it up online, uh, will appear in the Senate next. It did pass out of the House and a similar bill in Utah, currently on hold, might appear later in their session. Happening in the Montana legislature, Republicans are proposing several new amendments to the Montana Constitution this session. The party earned the power to put constitutional changes in front of voters when they gain their current 102 seat supermajority. Leaders say a dozen amendment proposals will get serious consideration. Everything from expansion of the right to bear arms to Supreme Court elections. And this week, protesters swarmed the Capitol, arguing lawmakers are going too far. I think that we're concerned about voter education, voter information, and the invite to out-of-state interest and moneyed interest to pour money into the campaigns um, and really tip the scales and misinform and mislead people. I have 100% confidence in them that, uh, uh, that they can weigh in and um, that they can make the right choice. There are multiple other states that have double-digit uh, ballot initiatives each year. Uh, on their ballot and I think it's a good way to uh, get a test on some of these higher priorities, uh, top issues for the state uh, and let the voters weigh in on that. So uh, the way the rules work, Montana lawmakers can't actually pass a constitutional amendment. They just put it on the next ballot for voters to approve. Constitutional amendment proposals have a later tr uh, transmittal deadline than general bills. They'll need to move forward by the start of April. We'll continue following those. New numbers show Montana's unemployment rate dropped to an all-time record low, 2.5% in January. That's almost a full percentage below the U.S. average and good for fourth best in the nation. Montana added 1,500 payroll jobs in January with the construction industry seeing the biggest gains. That led to a record high 555,920 people employed in Montana. It's the end of an era. Tomorrow, the downtown Billings Conoco on 6th and 27th closes for good. It's been a popular morning stop for years now. Q2's Kelsey Marison tells us why the owner says it's time to be done. This Conoco gas station is the perfect one-stop shop for road trips, but it won't be here for much longer. On Saturday, it's closing its doors for good. 20, 35, and 40, my man. At first glance, it may look like any other convenience store. I'll take these three boxes right here. A place to refuel and load up on snacks. When he took over, I made it a point to make sure it's the only place I buy gas and all my goodies. But for many, this Conoco on the corner of 6th and 27th means much more. Many stop just to chat with their favorite neighborhood gas man. I really like him. He treats me more than fair. That's Moon Lee, the owner of the business. The Billings native has spent five years of his life right here and actually grew up just a few blocks away. I could look out the window and see myself riding a bike. You know, I remember Cobb Field. I remember when uh, they'd ice over the parking lot and it was a skating rink. So it's kind of like I'm coming back to the neighborhood. A business that's become a labor of love. love you, Lou. You yeah, you too. Take care, my man. In fact, for the past month, Lee has been the gas station's only employee, working 14-hour days from sunrise to sunset. Since February 12th. I got bills to pay, you know. Baby needs new pair of tennis shoes. <laughs> but come Saturday, Lee will have a lot more time on his hands. The store is set to close. After the property owners decided to sell the lot, Lee's not sure what's next. I need to move past this stress so then I can take a little bit of time to decompress and figure out how I'm going to reinvent myself and where I'm going to end up. But one thing he does know, he'll miss the chit chat and smiles with his customers, but we'll keep in touch. Oh, definitely. I'm going to miss him a lot, but he's gave me a, his card so we can stay in contact. Just 
just it's just good times. It's home. So, and thank you to everyone who's come in. I uh, appreciate it, and uh, I'm going to miss y'all. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Thank you, Kelsey. New this morning, 11 of the nation's largest banks agreed to inject $30 billion into First Republic in a rare move to strengthen a regional lender. Stock for the San Francisco-based bank has taken a beating after two other U.S. banks collapsed and were taken over by federal regulators. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen helped negotiate the First Republic plan. She proclaimed, our banking system is sound, while testifying before Congress yesterday. And the U.S. is reassessing its drone operations over the Black Sea following a collision with a Russian fighter jet. A video released by the Pentagon shows two planes dumping fuel on the drone before one finally hits the propeller. Officials are reviewing whether the intelligence collection is worth the risk of escalation with Russia. Some of the wreckage was recovered by Russian ships, but those ships left the area because it's within missile range of Ukrainian forces. And exciting things are happening at the Art House Cinema in downtown Billings. This morning, our Q2's David J walks us through an upcoming remodel that will make a local staple an even bigger attraction. Art House Cinema will show one more movie before it closes The Quiet Girl, an international film. This part of the theater will become a restaurant. The main theater will be moved into another part of the building, and they'll also have two other theaters, and the plan is to reopen during the summer. It's a transformation that began several years ago. The old Center Lanes bowling alley, which before that was a car dealership, demolished to make way for the Art House Cinema, and now a new phase in the project. If we're doing a stage, or if we're doing a poetry reading, or some kind of other event where they want to use this stage, we can just push that screen back. The Art House Theater is temporarily closing to remodel and eventually reopen with three theaters. This will become home to the main theater with about 100 seats. The old theater will be transformed into a restaurant with about 50 seats. The bar's going to stay the same. We're going to keep these old historic terrazzo floors. Again, these are from when the, the showroom from the car dealership. The three theaters together will host everything from plays and performances to shows on the big screen. To experience something in a room full of strangers, you just experience it different. Those attending Thursday's final show at the Old Theater say Art House is special, and they look forward to the new Art House. The people that come in are very friendly, and you get to know them. You know, it just has an ambiance about it. I'm glad that Billings has some place downtown that can bring arts and culture. A warm and friendly place, so it's not just coming to see a movie. The original estimate of the project was $1.7 million, and that's been reduced to $1.3 million with the help of volunteers doing the construction and good deals on materials. This truly is the community of Billings stepping up to say we want to be a part of this. During the closure, Art House will continue to offer films at the Babcock Theater. In Billings, David J. MTN News.